Before there was such a thing as a luxury SUV, the Mitsubishi Pajero Exceed was about as special as things got before you stepped into a Range Rover. I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and see, the thing is, after the boom of the SUV, where you can now get anything from a tiny crossover to a luxury option like the BMW X5 to the consummate off-roader that is the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Mitsubishi Pajero is a fair bit harder to define. It's a fine seven-seater and a capable off-roader, but it's not the best off-roader and it's not the best family hauler. However, recent big price cuts mean that the Pajero now looks like very good value indeed against its main competition, the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. The Pajero though is a much older car than the Prado, so is this cash worth saving? Pajero is the Exceed model, which is the top of the range, which means that things are a little bit special up here. The seven seats are decked out in black leather, although it's the leather you can wipe down, not leather in pure Nappa type form of trim, which is really handy considering what this car is all about. There's also lashings of wood grain, which is a little bit yesteryear, but who knows, that might be your taste. The center stack has also been refreshed recently, and it now has Mitsubishi's MMCS touchscreen infotainment system built in on the VRX and the Exceed. And to be honest, it's a pretty good system. It doesn't look the best on the sat-nav, but it's simple to use, which is what's really important. It also supports a variety of audio inputs, and the Exceed model also has a premium Rockford audio system, which yes, it sounds really good, but unfortunately it doesn't really suit the car because the Pajero seems to have quite a few loose fittings, which vibrate noisily if you turn up the volume even moderately high, which is a shame. That said, it's pretty comfortable up here. The front seats have, you know, a little bit of support, but this isn't a sports car. They're electrically adjustable though. There's also plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel, which means it should be possible for virtually any driver to get comfortable up here. It's also just a simple cabin. Everything's where you expect, and there's also plenty of storage for all your everyday kit. If you have taller kids or lots of friends, then the Pajero is a pretty great option because there's heaps of room back here in the second row. As you know, I am six foot, six foot nothing to be exact, and there's heaps of headroom, and also plenty of leg room for me back here, so that means that your kids will definitely be comfortable. As a bit of a trick for the kids back here, the Exceed has a standard roof-mounted DVD player, which also comes with wireless headphones. And if you want it, you could put a video console back here for them as well. That said, I hear that the entertainment out the window can be pretty engaging too. But while we're back here, let's talk about the price of the Pajero because most models are good value. You can get into the GLX, which is the base model, keep in mind it only has five seats, for $50,000 on road, which is 10 grand cheaper than the corresponding Toyota Prado. Most people will go for the mid-range VRX though, which has lots of niceties inside. It ditches that wood trim of the Exceed though, and that one can be had for $60,000 on road, which is really good. And this top of the range car is 70 grand, which is still competitively priced, but it's too expensive for the shortfalls of this car. So save your money and go for the VRX instead. With the third row of seats flat, the boot space of the Pajero is very generous, but you can increase this by folding the second row, which is simple with a lever on the back, like this. Get those headphones out of the way. And the seats fold right up and away to give you a very long and flat load bay Perfect for if you maybe want to pay a visit to that famous store, the one I'm particularly passionate about, or your camping gear or surfing gear, whatever you want really. Okay, let's talk about driving the Pajero, which is a mixed bag. We'll start with off-roading, which is a strong point. The independent front and rear suspension, the super select four-wheel drive, and Mitsubishi's all-terrain technology combine to make the Pajero a pretty competent off-roader. There's 225 millimeters of ground clearance, which is towards the top of the class. And the Pajero's 35 degree climbing angle and 25 degree departure angle mean that this car makes pretty light work of climbing, clambering, and beach driving. Unfortunately, the modern habitat of the SUV is on-road, and this is where the Pajero really battles against more modern competition. Is the Pajero refined? Ah, uh, no. And that starts with the engine, and there's just one, which is Mitsubishi's 3.2 litre DID four-cylinder turbo diesel. The numbers look pretty good on paper. There's 147 kilowatts of power and 441 newton meters of torque down low. But remember, the Pajero is pretty weighty at two and a quarter tons, so it's definitely not fast. 
the meaty mid-range torque is handy for overtaking, but the five-speed automatic is a slow one, so you spend plenty of time waiting for gear changes and overcoming turbo lag. You don't expect tall four-wheel drives to be handling superstars, but even so, the Pajero remains pretty composed through the corners. What lets it down is the steering, which is just so, so indirect. I mean, look how much I can move the steering wheel without really turning the car. In fact, you have to turn the wheel so far to get a corresponding change in direction that handling the Pajero around town or in tight car parks is really tiresome. And then there's the suspension, which as in the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, you would hope would be at least supple, but you'd be disappointed in the Pajero. For some reason, every speed bump, pothole and imperfection in the road is allowed to penetrate every inch of the cabin. I'm genuinely surprised that my spine is still in place. Thankfully, at higher speeds, the suspension settles down and wind and road noise are pretty minimal, so it can be a pleasant experience in here when using the Pajero as a long distance cruiser. All right, safety. Uh, it has a five-star ANCAP safety rating and six airbags, which is okay, if not class leading. And I mean, you do feel pretty secure up here. There's the usual complement of active safety systems and the reversing camera is actually a pretty good one. Let's talk about running costs. And there's some value there because the Bajero is covered under Mitsubishi's cap price servicing program. What they do is they give you four services, one per year for the first four years. The first service is $395. The last three are 645 so not that cheap, but also not that expensive, really. When it comes to fuel, they're all turbo diesel, so it's not that bad. Mitsubishi says that the Pajero will do 9 litres to 100 kilometres. Over our week, mostly in town, we found that this was really about 11 litres per 100 kilometres, not too far off. And there's an 88 litre tank, which means that your range is about 7 or 800 kilometres. If you plan to take your family well off the beaten track, beyond the capabilities of mainstream crossovers that are more suited to the shopping run, you could do a lot worse than the value of the Mitsubishi Pajero. You can find out a lot more at chasingcars.com.au, but while you're here, don't forget to subscribe by clicking here.